back for part two of the Butterfly Blossom Blanket. We are going to be joining our squares together today. So before we join our squares together, if you prefer, you can make or you can block your squares to have them all a consistent size. They all have the same number of stitch counts around them. Um, sometimes our tension varies, so if you prefer to block your squares, you can do that now. Some of you may prefer to block after the border is done, or you may not need to block at all, so that's up to you. First thing you will want to do is have them laid out in the configuration that you prefer. If you've done the same amount of squares as the pattern, you will have three rows of three squares. To make it easier for the video, I'm just joining four squares together right now for you to be able to see. Um, but you can do this with as many or as few squares as you want. So once you have your configuration laid out, you want to take two rows. So if you're doing the three by three blanket with nine squares, you'll take two rows. We're going to work a horizontal join and we'll, you'll do that for as many rows as you have, and then we'll flip it and work the vertical joins. So to prepare for that, we're going to put the right side, so one row, you're going to fold that right side on top of the next row, right side. So we've got right sides together, the wrong sides are on the top and the bottom. So to get started, we want to use our border colored yarn. We have the squares right side together. So we're going to be working through both thicknesses of the square. Starting in the corner space, we'll insert our hook in that first square or the top square and the square that's on the bottom through the corner space. Pull the yarn through and make a single crochet. Then we're going to single crochet in each stitch across. So through both loops of the top square, both loops of the first stitch of the bottom square, pull the loop up, single crochet. And we'll continue that down the row, working through both loops of the stitches on both squares. You want to be careful that your work isn't too tight. If you are a tight crocheter, you might want to go up a half a hook size to work this join so it doesn't pull. So I'll let you continue to work those single crochet down the row and I'll meet you when we get to the corners again. If you find your squares aren't lining up well, you might want to put a stitch marker every so often through counting the stitches on both squares and putting it through the matching stitch on both sides to make sure that your squares line up. So when you have worked those single crochet down the first set of blocks and you come to the corner stitch, you will want to insert your hook through both chain spaces of the corner and place a single crochet. So I'll just open it up so you can see what it looks like from the right side. Creates a nice a solid continuous looking join of our border color. So then we want to take our next set of squares, again, making sure the right sides are facing. And if you prefer, again, you can join them up with stitch markers every so often, um, counting the stitches to line them up if you prefer. So we'll take the next set of squares, just insert our hook into those next chain spaces in the corner and make a single crochet. Before I pull through, I want to snug that yarn in so it's not gapping, so these Stitches are nice beside each other. And then just starting to work through both loops of our stitches again, matching up the top square to the matching stitch on the bottom square and making single crochet. So you'll continue to work that way all the way down the row, however many sets of squares you're joining in one row. Then I'll meet you at the end of the row. So again, once you've worked your way down all of your squares, you'll want to place a single crochet in this final chain space as well, and then you can fasten off. Okay, so that's our first horizontal join. You will want to repeat that for as many rows of squares as you have. 
and then you want to carefully fold open your squares and then being careful that they don't twist at the join here we're going to fold them the opposite way to start working the vertical join so you can get that prepared and we'll start that other join Okay, so I have prepared my squares, being careful not to twist them at any of those corner joins. And then we will just work in the same manner, taking our border color, So I've turned them again, so it looks like I'm doing a horizontal square, but I've already worked those and I've just turned my blanket to work the vertical join as well. So again, just like we did the horizontal join, we'll insert our hook through the chain space in the corner of each square, pull up our loop to make a single crochet. And then through both loops, of the stitches on both squares, single crochet, just matching up the next stitch of each square and working the single crochet, being careful not to be too tight, but a nice even tension. So you can go ahead and work this join on this first set of squares and I'll meet you where the corners join up. So when you get to where the corners have already been joined on the horizontal join, we still want to place a single crochet in this first set of squares in the corner space and then just working over the join that's there already we'll insert in the next squares corner space as well for a single crochet and then just continue our join matching up those first stitches and single crochet through both loops of both squares. And then again, once you get to the end of the row, you will just place a single crochet in the corner spaces at the end. And repeat that for all your vertical joins as well. So hopefully those joins went well for you and your squares are all connected now. These lovely scenes. We're going to start working a border. We're going to do two rounds in our same border color, and then we'll do a final round in our colored yarn. So now we're going to start working the border. Again, we're going to use our border color for the first two rounds. You can start by joining with a slip stitch in a corner space and chaining two, or we can start with a half double crochet in the corner space. We'll place a second half double crochet in that same corner space and then working in each of the stitches, being careful to get this very first stitch which is hidden a bit, we'll work a half double crochet in each stitch down the sides. So half double crochet in every stitch. I will meet you at the end of this first block when we get to where the two corners come together. So I've reached the corner of my first square. I have a half double crochet in that last stitch. I'll place a half double crochet in the corner chain space, skip over the join and half double crochet in the next corner chain space. And again, I want to snug up my yarn to keep those close together so it's not stretched out and then continue down the side with a half double crochet in every stitch. Now you will find as we're working this border, it's not going to be completely straight in this section where the squares join and that is by design. That helps with that sort of butterfly effect that we have at the end of this. So there'll be a slight curve in your border. Once you've worked your way down the very first side and we get to the next corner space, we will place two half double crochet in that corner space, chain two, and two more half double crochet in that same corner space. Ready to work down the next side, half double crochet in every stitch. and so on, just as we worked the first side. 
So you can continue that all the way around and I will meet you just at the end of the round before we join. All the way around and come back to where we started. We want to place two more half double crochet in the same corner space as our start. Chain two and then join to our starting half double crochet. Mine's just a little bit tight there today. There we go. To end this first round. If you worked the three by three squares together, there would be 152 stitches aside. Now for the second row of the border, we actually want to flip our work and work back the other way. So with the wrong side facing, we want to slip stitch back into that chain two space we just made and chain four which counts as a half double crochet chain two. We'll place another half double crochet in that corner space. And then we'll half double crochet in each stitch down the side. When you get to the next corner, you will place one half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet in the corners. And again, you can work that all the way around and I'll meet you just at the end of the round. When you've worked your way around and made it to our starting corner, you will want to join it to the second chain of our starting chain four. And go ahead and fasten off. For round three of the border, we will attach with a slip stitch our colored yarn. We're going to be working what is known as a reverse single crochet, also known and often referred to as the crab stitch. So it's just like single crochet, instead of inserting our hook in the normal direction we work, we work backwards. So we're going to be working down this side. So in each chain space in the corner, we'll insert, pull up a loop, and finish a single crochet. Then we want to insert what would normally be back or behind that single crochet. And it's easier to show on the stitches here. Pull up a loop in the stitch and finish the single crochet. So we're going to be working backwards along our stitches. And by doing this, it twists the stitch to give this lovely sort of rolled edging. You do want to watch your tension that your loops are consistently the same. Sometimes we can get a slightly stretched loop and it, it uh, just looks a little bit loose or sloppy. I have a couple of those right at the beginning there, so you just want to watch that. So you would just continue to work this around all of the sides, placing two in each corner. So I'll let you do that. I'm going to meet you or show you what it looks like when we finish our last side and approach the corner and how to fasten off. So just to show you at the end, once you've worked all the way around, instead of trying to work a regular slip stitch join and leave sort of a bulky knot that distorts this, what I like to do is remove the loop from the hook and then I insert from the back under those rolled loops of that first reverse single that we've done and then put the loop back on the hook and pull it through to the back and fasten off in the back. And it still gives more of that rolled look then on that final stitch. Or you can cut your yarn and pull the loop all the way through and then the same way, either taking your um, a needle, you could thread it back through or take your, your hook and just pull that loop through to join and then fasten on the back. And there you have it. You enjoy your this beautiful butterfly blossom blanket.